Hello and welcome to this edition of Credit Matters TV. I'm John Pykuch, Director of Communications for Standard & Poor's Sovereign Credit Ratings Team, and I'm joined by Jody Mukherjee, Senior Director, and Richard Francis, Director, both Sovereign Rating Analysts with Standard & Poor's, and we're here today to talk about the ratings on Aruba and Curacao. Joy Deep, we've recently announced a revision on the outlook for Aruba on its A minus rating, which has gone from uh, a negative outlook to a stable outlook. Could you please talk to us about the reasons behind the, um, the, the upward revision of that, of that outlook? Yes, we went negative on the outlook for Aruba last year because the economy was in bad shape. It had contracted a great deal, and uh, the refinery on the island had closed down tourism had been hurt, and there were some fiscal pressures on pensions and health care. And the government had taken some steps to address those issues, but it looked like the balance of risk was going negative. We uh, just did the revision of Aruba, and we went back to stable, basically acknowledging the fact that the economic recovery looks like it's going to be a little bit more sustained and uh, deeper than we had expected, because the oil refinery is back, tourism is picking up. And there's also an ambitious investment program to sort of raise the competitiveness of the island and make it more attractive. And the government has taken some pretty tough decisions to take care of pension problems, uh, which we have all over the world these days, especially looking at a uh, public sector pension plan and the uh, general pension plan and the healthcare system. These are decisions which will have an impact in the long term, not in the next couple of years. But since we're looking at long term issues, uh, we were impressed by the ability of the government to come to an agreement with the uh, partners in society, unions, uh, business leaders, other segments, to make some long-term reforms which are important for the rating. So as a result of those factors, Aruba's rating has now has a stable outlook on at the A- minus level. Okay. You just mentioned some long-term factors uh, related, related to Aruba. Can you talk about the, the growth prospects uh, for, the, for the country? Yeah, Aruba is a small island of only 100,000 people, so it is always going to be vulnerable to external forces. So tourism is the dominant economic driver in Aruba, and of course the, any island can only do so much to attract tourism. But the tourism inflows have picked up this year, and there are some projects underway which uh, augur well for future growth. Some hotel projects, as well as a rather ambitious program to improve the physical infrastructure of the island, you know, building parks, reducing the cost of energy through using uh, cheaper fuels like natural gas, or going to renewable energy such as solar and wind. These are long-term projects, but uh, if they're well implemented, then you could see costs going down, imports going down, especially for uh, heavy oil imports, and the tourism flow gradually rising because the island will become more attractive. So we foresee that this year certainly growth will be above 10%, which is quite high, but of course the economy uh, had a recession of almost 10% two years ago. And the oil refinery is back in production, so that will help next year as well. So for the, uh, next year we're looking at maybe 4 to 5% economic growth. And after that, of course, the numbers will decline. But at least there is some growth momentum in the pipeline now, which makes us more confident that the government can reach its fiscal targets because it is running large government deficits, and we expect those to go down significantly in the next two years. Okay. Thank you. Now let's turn to Curacao. Uh, Richard, Standard & Poor's has just assigned uh, a new rating on, the, uh, on Curacao. Um, could you talk us through the, the credit factors behind this, uh, ra this new rating, which is actually Standard & Poor's 127th sovereign rating? Right. Um, we assigned an A- minus rating on, on Curacao with a stable outlook. Uh, basically, the factors for for the for the for the A- minus rating, which is the third highest rating in in, uh, in Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, is because of the prosperous economy. It has a t per capita of 21,000, relatively wealthy by you know standards in, in the Caribbean and, and Latin America. For secondly, it's a stable democratic system of government. Uh, it's, it's part of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, and it, it, 
it has very strong ties to the government of the Netherlands because of this, uh, this arrangement, basically. Uh, and that's provided them with a lot of uh, benefits, specifically uh, in 2010, but before it became a, an independent uh, country, or autonomous country within the, the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Um, the Dutch provided significant debt relief to, uh, to Curaçao and to St. Martin, which we don't rate. Um, and this debt, this debt relief lowered their debt burden by a very significant amount, and now they have a debt to GDP of about 30%. Furthermore, as part of the agreement, they, they, uh, they said that they, they, the government of, of the Netherlands has agreed to buy any new issuance of debt that they have, and right now the, the, uh, the Dutch uh, Treasury actually owns 99% of Curaçao's debt. So uh, those, are, those are the strengths for, for Curaçao, and that's why we have a relatively high rating for, for, for the country. Right. Thank you. I think this last question is really for both of you, and we're, we're looking at, at both Aruba and Curaçao, uh, both part of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, both with A- minus ratings. Could you maybe compare and, and, and contrast the two from a credit perspective? Sure. You, can, you can start with sure. Aruba. Yeah. Uh, although the ratings are the same, the, the factors are a little different in either case to support or constrain the rating. You know, uh, Aruba achieved its constitutional status, uh, it's called status aparte, which is autonomy within the Kingdom of Netherlands back in 1986. Uh, Curaçao is just doing it now. Right. And uh, Aruba in that sense has had a longer history of being on its own. And the Dutch government has far less involvement in the financial management of Aruba's uh, budget and fiscal matters. It, it does have some say, but basically there's no guarantee of the, their debt and there is no agreement as in Curaçao to purchase the debt of, of the Aruba government. So Aruba has sort of been managing its affairs for quite a while. And, and I think the difference mm -hmm. with in the terms of Curaçao is, is, is they don't have as long of a track record. Uh, it's only been independent for basically a little over a year now, uh, for one. And secondly, uh, in contrast to Aruba, on the other hand, they have much stronger oversight by the, by the Dutch over for example, on uh, every year they have to, to basically ha there's an, uh, a commission mainly by, by Dutch uh, technical uh, uh, people um, and, and a commission that oversees the budget and the formulation of the budget. And they, they don't have to give a formal K, okay, but they have to, they give their opinion on what the budget looks like. And part of the agreement is that they have to have basically balanced operating uh, budget and they cannot have interest to, to revenues above 5%, at least for the next five years. So there's, strong, there's much stronger ties with the, with the government of the Netherlands, which is rated AAA, of course, uh, in the case of Curaçao. And I think the second one, is, uh, which is similar for both of them, is they're both uh, very prosperous economies. Uh, in mm -hmm. the case of, of Curaçao, it's, it's relatively, uh, it's about a per capita of 21,000 U.S., and in Aruba, it's about 25,000. So that's another uh, mm -hmm. solid factor that underpins the ratings uh, in, in both of the countries. I think the, the one of the differences is on the fiscal, and maybe I'll start with Curaçao, you can mention what, mm -hmm. the, what, the, what about Aruba, is because of the significant debt relief uh, and because of the, the rules that they have, they have to have a uh, much tighter fiscal uh, policy in Curaçao, at least, and we expect them to over the next uh, five years, to be running essentially surpluses uh, in, their, in their fiscal accounts, and their debt level, therefore, will remain low and continue to fall, uh, whereas yeah. the case in Aruba... Yeah, it's going to be somewhat different. The, uh, the debt level in Aruba, <coughs> if you measure it as a share of GDP for the consolidated general government, is higher than in Curaçao because of the debt relief that Curaçao got, and Aruba is not going to get debt relief. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the government has a plan to reduce its own deficit from almost 7% of GDP this year towards 3% uh, by 2013, and we're going to be watching whether or not they can meet that target. The, the difference in, in terms of the fiscal story is that uh, Aruba has to rely a little bit more on its own efforts at this moment to fix some problems in, not problems, but I guess uh, financial shortcomings in the healthcare system because every year the government has to make transfers to that system. Also, the pension systems, although they have been reformed recently, do require further reforms going forward unless uh, the government keeps uh, transferring resources to them in the future. So those are some policy issues right now which are a little bit different from the situation in Curaçao because their financial situation changed dramatically. Whereas I think in Aruba's case, it's more of a stable 
uh, financial situation and a higher burden of debt. I, th I think one, one last point is I think the, the another difference where actually Aruba looks better uh, than, than Curacao is on the external on the external side. If you look at Curacao, they, they've been last year in 2010, they ran a deficit on the order, a current account deficit on the order of 31% of GDP, which is extremely high. Uh, quite different from, from Aruba. So although Curacao looks better on the fiscal and debt side, Aruba uh, looks better on the external side. They have a current account deficit oh, of... It'll be uh, in single digits yeah, going so forward. It's a so it's much difference. Uh, that's, a, that, that's a strength for Aruba, or compar comparatively a strength for Aruba versus, versus Curacao. Okay. Thank you very much. We've been speaking with Jody Mukherjee and Richard Francis about the sovereign credit ratings on Aruba and Curacao. For Credit Matters TV, I'm John Pykuch. Thank you for watching.